There are many proposals in the Senate out there. Is there anything that you see that you like that you believe could also pass the House? So we're building consensus around the issues regarding dreamers with 1.3 million. We are supportive of border security, whether it be more technology or even custom and border patrol, as long as they don't have an, an enforcement internal uh, duty. But what we are vehemently opposed to is the wall. It's costly, it's medieval, and it won't work in this 21st century. And then, of course, we don't want to reduce legal immigration because that's going to hurt growth in our country. But isn't that worth it if it also means that you could give dreamers a chance to stay in the U.S. and give them protections? Well, certainly we're going to have to take a hard look at whatever bill ultimately comes out of the Senate. But it's my job to make sure that the principles of our community are articulated. And we think we can do border security with higher technology, custom and border patrol, and obviously work to help 1.3 million kids who know no country other than their own to stay here. The wall itself is something that is a monument of discrimination, and it's not going to work. It's going to be overly expensive, 30 to $50 billion, when technology in this modern 21st century is what's really called for. So, Con Congressman, uh, clearly you agree with some other people who really question this wall. But at the same time, we've heard some Democrats up from Capitol Hill saying, look, if that's the price we have to pay in order to get these 1.8 million people on a path to citizenship, we don't like it, but we're willing to pay it. In the end, don't the Republicans actually have the upper hand in the negotiation here? Because there are these 1.8 million Americans who uh, were children when they came here who would otherwise be deported. Don't you at some point have to really give in? You know, at some point, as the bill comes over from the Senate, we'll take what we have at face value and make the final call. I know right now it's about how much percentage of the wall could we be willing to take, 10 percent of funding, 20 percent of funding? This is something that my constituents are deeply opposed to and all of us in the Congressional Hispanic Caucus. There are tough decisions ahead, but right now we need to stand with our values and take the bills in the House as we get them over from the Senate. We do believe, though, that the debate in the Senate is encouraging because there's been inaction for 18 years on the Dreamers issue, and finally we're seeing some movement. So, so Congressman, how confident are you that you and the House representative will even get to decide this in this sense? Let's assume for the moment that the Senate gets to 60 votes on some version of an immigration bill. Uh, is it clear that the Speaker of the House will let it go forward to a vote if the President opposes it? And the President has been very steadfast on things like what he calls chain migration. It's not altogether clear at all that Speaker Ryan will give a vote. And that's why the American people have to rise up. You know, there'll be tremendous pressure after the Senate comes together, both sides of the aisle, to get something done. And for him to sit and do nothing is not only a betrayal to these 1.8, 1.3, we're hearing as many as 2 million dreamers in this country, but it also just shows that there'll be a stark contrast in November. Congressman, we, of course, had another tragedy in your state, the mass shooting in Florida. President Trump, again, making remarks today and not mentioning guns at all. Do you expect anything to get done on this front? You know, the important thing for the American people to understand is that something can get done. This shooter down in Parkland, Florida, we understand got his guns potentially through private sales or a gun show loophole. No background checks, even with a troubled mental history. This loophole needs to close. Over 90 percent of Americans support it. When we looked at the Pulse nightclub shooting in Orlando, this gentleman who was a shooter there was on the no fly, no buy list uh, or on the FBI watch list. And if we had no fly, no buy, he could have been prevented. And then with the bump stock issue in Las Vegas, that converted it into an automatic weapon. The key to understand is we can have solutions. We just have an inaction from a majority of Republicans here who don't want to touch this, and the American people are put at risk. Have you seen, Congressman, any shift at all in this debate? I mean, we've been through so many of these shootings now, including those little elementary school children who were killed up in Connecticut, and yet, and yet there was no meaningful movement forward. Have you seen the debate shift at all, or are we just having the same debate again and again and again with the same result? So I think the key is there are specific issues we could get done. It doesn't have to be a comprehensive anything. It has to be specific issues that there is a vast support by the American people that are going to save lives. And if the American people continue to understand that, we're hearing a lot of uh, folks from our district reach out today in support of these things, then if we can't get something done now, again, another major contrast in America 
come November that Democrats are for sensible gun reform after thousands and thousands of kids and Americans are dying from the absence of it. And this will be something that people get to make a decision on.